In today's video, we'll be looking at creepy and scary TikToks that you should not watch before bed. This woman was caught in the middle of a ritual with her child. When the police arrived, she left her child to run away. But the child's condition shocked the police for life. Hey, they probably made this video, y'all. Ain't no way. Someone just recorded this. What the heck? Okay, now this look a little creepy, though. The Simpsons have once again predicted the unsettling events currently unfolding. Listen closely. In an episode from 1998, the series hinted at an economic crisis, a nuclear war, and the death of the United States leader, all occurring in the same year. The episode in question, titled Bart to the Future, offers a glimpse of a future where Lisa Simpson has become the President of the United States. During a discussion with her team, Lisa mentions that the previous administration, led by President Biden, left behind budgetary issues and quite a mess. What's even more unsettling is that these predictions seem eerily close to the reality we are living today. The President of the United States finds himself in a war zone, economic turbulence continues to worsen, and international tensions and major conflicts mirror what the Simpsons foresaw over two decades ago. The final predictions of these events made by the Simpsons are all the more terrifying. It's hard not to be captivated by the show's ability to anticipate these major events. Share for part two. Oh, no. Nah. What y'all doing if y'all door just shut like that? Yeah, man, I think your home might be haunted, too. Mm-mm. Oh. Look, the cat even looks scared. Maybe.
Want to get creeped out? Let's talk about the real Hellfire Club. And this is not at all like Stranger Things, unfortunately, but it's it's wild, trust me. I'm so excited to tell you about it. As you may have figured out from this intro, the real Hellfire Club was not just a bunch of kids sitting around playing d d It would be cool if it was, but that just wasn't what it was. The real Hellfire Club has components of murder, paranormal entities, sacrifices, and even a visit from the devil himself. So stay with me. But also I will be giving a trigger warning later because it does get very dark. The Hellfire Club was a name given to several exclusive clubs for or high society rakes, which are immoral people. And these were established in Ireland in the 18th century. These clubs were for people who wanted to take part in immoral acts and were normally people who were in politics. The club also allegedly had distant ties to an elite society called the Order of the Second Circle, which I'm going to be looking into as well. One of the most famous Hellfire clubs was ran by the Duke of Wharton. He was a politician, but basically had a second life where he was known as a drunkard, an infidel, and a rake. The Duke's Hellfire Club was a satirical gentleman's club. The club was known to ridicule religion. However, they did this more out of shock value and not to actually be a serious attack on religion. It was said that the president of the club was actually the devil. However, these people did not worship the devil or demons or anything mm. of that nature, but they did actually call each other devils. Another thing about mm. this club is that they actually admitted both men and women equally, which was not the norm for the time. The club would hold mock religious ceremonies and have really interestingly named dishes, such as Holy Ghost Pie, Breast of Venus, and the devil's loin. They would drink hellfire punch and different members of the group would come dressed as different religious characters hmm. from the Bible. At this point, the clubs start to get a little bit more like culty. So there was a commonly known hellfire club of Sir Francis Dashwoods. The club had a motto, Fais ce que tu voudrais, which means do what thou wilt. Fun fact, Benjamin Franklin was actually said to take part in some of these meetings in 1758 during his time in England. Eventually, these meetings were moved into a series of tunnels and caves and would be decorated with mythological themes, phallic symbols, and other items of schmectual nature. Some of these meetings lasted a week or longer. The members would dress in white ritual clothing and the leader, which they called the abbot, would be dressed in red ritual clothing. Now, this is where we get to the place where the club is starting to be held in a building that is very haunted and things just take a turn. It just gets very wild. So now I'm going to tell you about Montpelier Hill, which is in Dublin, Ireland, and is more commonly known as Hellfire Club. And I'm going to give you a little snippet of a description that I found about the hill. On a windswept slope in the Wicklow Mountains near the summit of Mount Pellier, with a commanding view overlooking Dublin City, lies the burnt and blackened shell of a sinister old hunting lodge, now called the Hellfire Club. Follow along for part two. It gets wild. Hmm. The Hellfire. Hold on a second. It's weird. Oh my god! Oh no. To my hotel room and immediately see this. You see that line under the door? Look at that. What is this? <laughs> Look y'all, this is an actual thing. You gotta be careful where you stay. You should check everywhere because you never know what's underneath you. You know, they be having little tunnels and secret little corridors and it's, it's man, look into it. Look into the, uh, the, the tunnels and stuff underneath hotel rooms, guys. Yes, yes. Maybe it's kind of service. What is this? What the fish snatcher? Let's see what's going on here. This is crazy. This is a hotel. Let's stick it all the way in. So a smuggling time. What's that? What the fish snatcher? So I just moved into this house and I found this little room right here. And every time at night I keep hearing noises from the closet. <gasps> Someone oh, or something. Paranormal investigators Tarek, Merrick, and Rimsey from the YouTube channel Paranoiacs travel to a remote abandoned house in the middle of nowhere in Austria. The structure surrounded by nothing but snow looks like something straight out of a horror movie. In the dead of night, the three friends brace the icy cold weather to explore the creepy building. They quickly realize that they might not be alone. Mr. Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter, Bitter,
şuraya bak mesela. Abi çok böyle çöp bu tehlikesi ben hiç bunu yok. Evin üstünde kar falan da var. Ya kış. Az dur. Tam üstü bize geliyor. EMF açayım mı? EMF aç. The paranoiac team hears strange sounds, almost like footsteps coming from the second floor, and soon after a heavy door falls over on its own. They question what they might be dealing with, something paranormal or someone up to no good. The three explorers hear more strange sounds coming from upstairs, and they cautiously approach the staircase to check it out. It did not go well. Seslerden ben de şoktayım da yine de yine çekip konuşup çıkmamız gerekiyor. Şu bir mezara benzemiyor mu? Bir ses var gide. Gel. Biz buraya bir girelim gel. Ha şu içeri girelim. Şimdi az bir çek. Yukarı çıkıyoruz. Emin misin abi? Abi ne oluyor? O nereden geldi ya? Yukarı çektin mi? Hiçbir şey çektim, yok mu yukarıda? Çektim abi dedi. Resmen üstümüze attılar. Hayır yolu kapattılar. Abi bence burada var hiçbir yere daha gımıldamaya gerek yok. Abi şunu bir şey şeyine bak. Aşırı... As they are debating whether to go upstairs, the decision is made for them as a heavy bed made of straw is thrown down the staircase, blocking their path. The paranoiax team decides that's quite enough of all that, and they just leave the creepy abandoned structure. Yeah, the thing was But once back outside in the freezing snow, they take one last look back at the building. And it was connected. Abi ses. Ne oluyor lan? Ben tövbe ya. Şık mı var orada? Az yukarıda da var. Şu. Abi bir şey. Bir şey var orada. Ne oluyor lan? Abi bak siyah bir şey var. Görüyor mu şunu? <gülüyor> yürü yürü. Bu işin şakası yok. İçeride hepten cin düğünü var. A strange shadow can be seen from one of the upstairs windows. The investigators believe the entity to possibly be a jinn. But what do you think? Or the investigators dealing with a dark presence? Is it a homeless squatter who was simply defending his territory? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. You can watch this full video and many more creepy explorations over on the YouTube channel, Paranoiacs. If you see a video that you think would be perfect for the top five, or if you have a ghost hunting channel and you caught something great, contact me at nukestop5 at gmail.com. This father and son were brutally murdered on camera by the cartel. Before I get started, I just want to say this is definitely the worst cartel video on the internet. The video oh, that I'm man. about to explain to you was uploaded sometime in 2018. The setting of the video is in some sort of forest. The I'm video begins with this. both men kneeling on the ground with their hands tied and their mouths gagged. The father and son are then questioned by their captors and soon after the father is beaten by what looks like a 2x4 or something along the lines of a big wooden stick. And when I say beaten, I mean beaten. They are not taking it easy on him at all. Soon after this, the father is decapitated right in front of his son with a knife. The knife isn't too big, but the worst part about this whole video is his son's reaction to watching his dad get beheaded. He was crying hysterically and wailing as you would expect, but it really stuck with me because it's a different kind of crying I've never heard before. The father who is now beheaded is completely covered in blood and is obviously dead. His son continues to cry hysterically, but what's about to happen to him is absolutely sickening. Please never go looking for this video because what I'm about to explain is extremely disturbing. Look, when they say that, please don't ever go look. Y'all know that y'all are about to go try to find the video now. I mean, I'll, I'm not going to go look for the video. I don't know. From what he's saying, this is just, I don't even want to watch it. After decapitating and killing the father, they move on to the son, but they don't decapitate him. They actually begin to flay him, which is far more painful and a prolonged way to die. This is how they tortured people back in the medieval times. 
The killers basically take knives and just start slicing off the skin from the boy's chest down to his abdomen and completely skin him alive. They remove all the skin in that area as well as huge pieces of flesh and throughout this whole process the son was alive and conscious. He would sometimes drift in and out of consciousness from the pain and loss of blood I would assume. Sometimes he would appear lifeless and other times he would react to what they were doing to him. It got to the point where they skinned the boy so much that you could literally see his organs moving and they started removing them. For example, you could see his lungs inflate and deflate. It's honestly just horrifying to watch. The killers then take a knife and cut out the son's heart and hold it up to the camera. And the heart is still beating continuously. They then hold it up for a few seconds and the video then concludes. I really urge you to not go looking for this video because it's truly a sickening video that nobody should have ever seen. I've never seen anything this horrendous and inhumane in my life and trust me, you don't want to either. There's something about hearing a son whimper and scream watching his dad get decapitated that really made me feel uneasy. It really can't be described or recreated. This is by far the worst cartel execution video out there and rest in peace to this father and son. Nobody deserves to go this way. There's a part of the dark that was crazy. Yo, I had ran into a video like that before, like on some accident stuff one time. I'm just on Facebook and I'm scrolling and somebody shared a video and I messed around and clicked play. And I should not have clicked play. It was similar to that, but not all the way. And I was just like, why is this on Facebook? It's crazy. Like the dark web or wherever it is that these people find these videos. Like, man, I try to stay away from that stuff because just even him explaining that y'all, no, nah, man, that, that's just messed up. Web that we aren't supposed to see. I'll assume you all know about the dark web. Well, what you've heard is true. It's not a great place. While some people are there to score some smokable grass or firearms, or even out of sheer curiosity, others, well, they're obviously not up to anything good. But I'm not here to talk about those sickos. I'm here to talk about what lies beyond that point. The more cryptic and unexplainable part of the internet the part that nobody's really supposed to see. There was an infographic that cropped up a while ago. Not sure when. The eight levels of the internet. Maybe you've seen it. As interesting as it was, it's complete bunk. I'm sorry, but polymeric falsigold derivation means nothing in the prime arch system. However, that doesn't mean it was an easy place to find. Now, I'm not going to begin to tell you how to get here. It's unlikely that you'd be able to, even if I did. I'm not tooting my own horn here. I just didn't have a life outside of this. I was warned, of course. Everybody told me I wasn't going to like what I saw, that I wouldn't even understand it. Now I'm passing off that warning to you. Don't try to look for this. A group of psychologists okay. studied 400 different movies to find the most realistic psychopath. And the winner was Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men. It's said that he appears to be effectively invulnerable to any form of humanity or emotion. Popular characters Hannibal Lecter and Patrick Bateman didn't even make the top 25. Mm. The actor who played Danny in The Shining didn't know it was a horror movie until after he was done with filming. He was led to believe that he was just filming a drama movie about a family that lives in a hotel. This was the original design for Voldemort, which many find far more terrifying than what they went with. Mm -hmm. The woman who voiced the demon Pazuzu in The Exorcist had a son who killed his entire family. Oh, no. He then proceeded to shoot himself in both temples simultaneously, and he did all of this while wearing a Freddy Krueger mask. What the heck? While filming Poltergeist, the clown doll nearly killed Robbie Freeling when an animatronic error caused its arm to tighten around his neck. When the actor started gesturing that he couldn't breathe, Steven Spielberg thought he was just improv acting. All right, let's talk about Smile Dog. This image dates back to the early beginnings of the internet. It said this is a cursed picture of a Siberian Husky. This is the actual picture, so turn your brightness up. Smile Dog's main goal is to spread the word about him all over. It's said that if you don't spread the word or share his image, that he will come and torture you. His special power is the ability to manipulate well, guys, y'all heard him. Make sure you share this video because if not, Smile Dog is coming for you. And nobody wants to see Smile Dog, right? Your mind, in your dreams, and in real life. The way people figured this out is from one victim. He asked Smile Dog, What do you want in his dream? Smile Dog replied, To spread the word. Smile Dog would go on to torture this person repeatedly until they were no more. 
and apparently there is no way to escape Smile Dog. He is known to target his victim for months or even years, and he is very persistent with his goals. He will torment you and hurt you until you either spread the word or unalive yourself. And if you make him mad enough, he will manifest himself into the real world out of your dreams. He will viciously attack you and drag your soul down to hell with him. Here's another image of Smile Dog. Some people theorize that he has different forms that he takes, and this is actually Satan himself manifesting himself into the real world. But whatever it may be, this is definitely a creepy story. I hope you guys enjoyed this creepy pasta. Comment what you think and comment for what you want to see next. And don't forget, these stories are for entertainment and informational purposes only. What the heck? You better lock your door. Then what's your name then? What the heck is this? What in the world are those? Exactly what I'm thinking. See, I don't mess with dolls, y'all. <laughs> Did you just see that? Sam and Colby posted a new video like a couple days ago, and it's insane. Like, if you don't believe in the afterlife or ghosts or any of that stuff, go watch it. They had Cody and Satori there trying to communicate with the spirits by holding hands with one another. That's like their thing. That's what they do. That's how they're paranormal investigators. They like hold hands and they're able to hear some knock. I J K L M N O people A B C D E F G H A B C D E here. There are people here, not living people. Okay. So while they were doing that, something crazy happens and it made Sam break down. It was so sad. I had to pause it because I started breaking down. Like the person who came to them. Now it could like, I don't know. Like I, I'm still going back and forth about it. Like, is it real? Is it not? You have to watch it. It was so insane that people are even calling Satori and Cody the new Ed and Lorraine Warren. The way they're able to communicate by just holding hands soulmates he stayed there for a whole week but they only released one episode so far i'm dying to see what happens when they go in the basement like release it already of a man who was being okay. tormented by intense paranormal activity at nighttime inside his home and he thinks it may be because of an old collectible statue he has mm -hmm. right by the stairs well it turns out that he managed to capture some more paranormal activity inside his house on another night and this time he finds the statue out of place what, what he captures is absolutely terrifying Let me just come from the kitchen. Is anyone there?
statue. Uh oh, not a statue on the ground, huh? Should have kept that statue in Egypt. What do you want? Stop! Now imagine this, y'all. This would be crazy. He keep going out there. Talk about some stuff. What do you want? If you witness something like this, run. Even if it's your little sister or your daughter, trust me. The end of the video is even more terrifying, but before I show it to you, I need to warn you. I can only protect my subscribers who have shared, liked, and commented this video. This can happen to anyone, even you. Kate is a young girl who often complains about hearing noises at night. She hears someone talking to her with the voice of her mom. But her parents believed it was just her imagination. However, this situation is clearly not imaginary. Oh, and she took a video look ready. at this. But wait until the end, it's even scarier. The paranormal spirit is just using the voice to force you to go outside your house. And then here is what he does. To protect yourself even more, no. fill the link in no. my bio. It's a gift. That ain't from the movie, though. It's all, that's from the movie. The worst psychiatric hospital on the dark web. In the description, it's said to be the most notorious hospital in the U.S. Where murders, rapes, and the like have taken place. But the ending makes us realize that it may not have been abandoned after all. <laughs> it's too creepy for me. Feet up in there. This girl was possessed oh, by six demons. Not only was she possessed by six demons, uh -huh. these demons were popular figures in history. What? One of them being Hitler, Nero the Emperor, one of them being Judas. What the There's a few more, but one of them was Lucifer himself. Every single voice you hear from her, 
it no. sounds different. What? Six voices, and they're different languages. Uh huh. Because you can imagine, hip speech German, of course. One of them was Nero speaking uh Latin. One of them was Judas speaking like the the old, I think like Aramaic language. One of the biggest tells like somebody's possessed is when they speak languages that it would be impossible for them to know. Yeah. yeah play there's videos? Yeah. There's audio. Cause no. Cause back in then, back then they didn't have video recording, right? Uh -huh. But they had like audio recording. So this is her regular voice. Before she was paralyzed, I mean possessed. Sounds like a regular woman, right? Very normal. Okay, very normal. Fast forward to now. What she? Uh, yeah, go right there. So this is. This is. This, is this next video was recorded by a security guard who was looking over at the security cameras inside a factory when he noticed something very strange. Somewhere inside this factory, a welder is working alone, but there's something about him that doesn't seem right. The security guard takes a closer look at the footage and immediately starts to feel uneasy. After watching this incident on the camera feed, he quickly calls over the welder to look at this video and explain what was happening in this clip. But just like the night guard, the welder was left completely baffled. He had no idea as to what was captured. Now this video took place during the night shift, which makes this incident twice as creepy. Nobody else had been working at this factory except the welder. But according to him, another welder who had the day off had come by to visit him. They had talked for just a bit before the night guard called over the welder to look at this footage. But after watching the video, the welder was left speechless. This is what was caught. As it turns out, the other welder who had dropped by to say hi wasn't actually there. The welder who's seen on camera swears that he saw the other worker in full uniform as though he was ready to work. They had even shaken hands according to him. But when looking at the footage, no one appears to be there. Although pretty strange, this incident gets a whole lot stranger after hearing what happened to the worker who apparently had the day off. To their shock, the factory had received news that this worker had passed away in his own home. His cause of death remains unknown, but knowing that he died on the same day this occurrence took place has left the welder feeling spooked. Could it be that the spirit of the welder's friend had paid him a visit during his shift? Right. Or could this whole incident be explained by something else? As with all videos, there has yet to be a definitive answer to this question. Alright guys, here are some more movies to get you in the mood for spooky season. And what I mean by that is these movies give off more of an atmospheric, eerie, creepy, and overall spooky Halloween or fall vibe. With that being said, let's get into it. First up, let's talk about the 1997 movie, Campfire Tales. So this movie follows a group of five friends who were just in an automobile accident. As they wait for help to arrive, they find some abandoned building and they set up a campfire. As they sit around the campfire, they begin to tell each other very scary stories. Some of the stories include a classic urban legend like The Hook. Another story is about a newlywed couple named Ricky and Valerie. But when their RV breaks down in the middle of the woods and what transpires after that is absolutely and genuinely terrifying. Another story is about a 12-year-old girl named Amanda and she's about to learn the dangers of talking to strangers on the internet. This one honestly freaks me out the most because when I was this girl's age, I was definitely talking to strangers in the AOL chat room. Yo, AOL chat room. I swear, same. Same here, I was young. Super young in the AOL chat room thinking I was doing something. I forgot what my username was back then, but I definitely had a username and everything. Yo, comment down below if you remember the AOL chat room. If you remember AOL's dial-up, right? Y'all remember you'd you'd have to get a, a, a internet service provider basically and you would get AOL and then it would dial up and you'd hear all the noises and man, he just took me down a whole little trip of nostalgia right there. 
So yes, this one definitely fucking freaks me out. And then another story about this man who's traveling cross country on his motorcycle when it breaks down. He then finds a house in the middle of nowhere during a freak rainstorm, and the woman that lives there isn't quite what she appears to be. All of these stories are just genuinely creepy and personally kind of freaked me out as a kid, but even re-watching it now, it's still pretty fucking creepy. And there's nothing more fall vibe-ish than sitting around a campfire with your friends or family telling each other ghost stories. This movie is a rarity, meaning it's completely out of print. So if you or you know someone that has this movie, I would highly recommend re-watching it or having your friend or family member, whoever owns it, let you watch it and just honestly check this one out. I'm personally happy that I found a copy of this probably like almost 15 years ago on DVD. And now it's a movie that I end up watching almost every single year around this time. Next up, let's talk about Stir of Echoes. This movie follows Kevin Bacon, and he gets hypnotized by his sister-in-law at a party for shits and giggles. But what he doesn't know is that after the hypnosis, his mind is now completely open. With that being said, he is now seeing a apparition of a teenage girl in his house. So it's up to him to piece together a months-long mystery. Stir of Echoes is just a genuine creepy movie, but also a very classic ghost story that I absolutely enjoy. <laughs> and it's not Halloween or fall vibes without a good ghost story, am I right? If you would like to check this one out, here's the list of where this one is currently streaming. And of course, I have to watch the classic The Blair Witch Project every fucking year. This movie is just absolutely fucking spooky. Like, if you grew up around this time, a majority of us actually believed the shit was real. The marketing for this was just pure fucking genius. If you've never seen this movie, the synopsis is literally like on the cover of the movie. In October of 1994, three student filmmakers disappeared in the woods near Brooketsville, Maryland while shooting a documentary. A year later, their footage is found. So this movie basically just starts off with the three student filmmakers and their production of their project titled The Blair Witch Project. But they soon get lost in the woods. And that's when they start coming across some very fucking creepy ass shit. This movie is definitely way more like atmospheric and psychological and they use a lot of noises and tension to really get that fear going. And if you've ever been camping and heard some weird noises at night, then this movie will definitely fucking creep you out. Like I used to go camping a lot with my family and I know for a fact that I heard some weird shit like growing up like out in the woods and I, my imagination would just fucking run. So this movie definitely played into that fear and that's why this movie creeps me out but also just being lost in the woods with all the dead leaves and being chased by a witch in the night just screams Halloween and fall vibes for me so yes I watch this every fucking year. And if you would like to check this one out or just give it a good rewatch here's the list of where this one is currently streaming. And of course, I would love to hear what you guys think about these movies in the thing in this manner. Do hmm. not stay there. Run and seek help. Yo, I ain't seen none of those movies, actually. None of them. But I do kind of want to watch them, though. Especially the Campfire Tales one. I kind of want to watch the Blair Witch Project. I, I feel like I watched a little bit of that when I was younger, but I didn't really like watch it, though. You know what I mean? So I, I got to watch the Blair Witch Project, too. Maybe you didn't quite catch what happened. Am I wrong? The rest of the video is truly shocking, so before I show you the end of this video and explain it to you, I must warn you. I can only protect my subscribers who have liked and shared this video. The little boy in this video is Tom. He's barely two years old, but what happens to him is far from child's play. As he was playing in his parents' bedroom, he began to stare intently at the large mirror adorning the wall. He seemed captivated, murmuring incomprehensible sounds and words, as if he were trying to communicate with his reflection. His parents, finding this amusing, started filming. However, they didn't know what would happen next. Unbeknownst to them, Tom had invoked an unknown presence. At first, nothing changed. But after a few minutes, I'll let you see the rest. <laughs> Dangerous jobs okay. in the world that 99.9% .9 of people couldn't handle. Underwater welding. 
Underwater welders repair large marine structures like oil rigs at depths of up to 8,000 feet below the surface. There are only around 3,000 underwater welders in the world with a death rate of 15% per worker. On average, 13 underwater welders lose their lives every year due to shocks and explosions. They make roughly $130,000 per year. Would you be brave enough to become an underwater welder? If you don't know Probably anything not. about the Annabelle doll, Ed and Lorraine Warren talk about the whole backstory of her, and it's creepy. Annabelle. Mm -hmm. This is a Raggedy Ann doll that's made like thousands of other dolls, except that this doll was used in communication, almost like having a seance. Mm -hmm. A nurse had received the doll 1971 as a present, a Christmas present from her mother. And the doll stands about three foot high. And she would take it to bed with her at night. That's common enough for girls to do. I take a pillow. Some people take a doll. Girls would like that. And one morning she got this idea to bring the doll from the bedroom into the kitchen where they were having breakfast. And she put it in a chair. And she said, oh, Raggedy Ann here is going to have breakfast with us today. Joking around. Okay, well, that was a joke. Then... The next thing, oh, bless you. the next thing, uh, she brought it down again the next morning and the next morning. But the third morning, they're talking to the doll, and the arms of the doll are on the chair like this. Suddenly, they went up and onto the table. Things would happen in their house, what we refer to as infestation. There would be knocking sounds. They'd see flashing lights in their bedroom at night shooting across the room. The bed would shake a little bit. It would get icy cold. Mm. They'd hear whispering, which we call magic whispering. They'd leave the doll in the bedroom. They'd come home after midnight, put the key in the door, unlock the door, and who do you think is standing there? The Raggedy Ann doll. Standing there. Now that doll has flimsy legs. Yeah. If you try to stand it up, you can't. But I've seen that doll stand. I've seen a lot of things happen around that doll. Well, this still didn't scare them. But one of the fiancés of one of the girls was against all of this. He said, burn the doll, throw it away, get rid of it. It's evil. Well, he falls asleep one afternoon, a Saturday. And uh, the doll is in a chair not far from him. And the girls are cleaning up the apartment. Mm -hmm. He wakes up with a start. He said, my God, what a nightmare. He said, uh, I dreamt that that doll was strangling me. He had marks on his throat. Was it psychosomatic? Well, let's see. He gets up, he looks at the doll in the chair, picks it up, and throws it right across the room. You're nothing but a rag doll. You couldn't hurt anyone. With that, Tony, seven psychic slashes appear on his body. Wow. Now, we've seen these kind of slashes. We've filmed them. Mm -hmm. These slashes come from nowhere. The blood came right through his shirt. Mm -hmm. The nurses witnessed this. Then, a huge chair rolled across the room. Pictures on the walls came off, started smashing and breaking. Loud pounding sounds. Now they were all frightened. They called the High Episcopal Canon in Hartford, Connecticut. He called Father Richard Nolan, an exorcist, and Father Nolan called us. Look. When it comes to those dolls, I ain't messing with no dolls. After movies like that, then you got that new movie out about the little AI doll. What's it like, Megan or something like that? Listen, man, it's spirits. I, I'm truly, I believe you could put spirits into toys or to different things. That's what I got the movie Toy Story and things like that or little toy soldiers because they're trying to tell us something, y'all. But yeah, these are some of the most scary and creepy videos that are out there. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, and until next time, YouTube, peace.